Uh, it is great to see everybody out here. We are obviously in some pretty unique times. Um, I gotta be honest, I love that we've moved the whole thing out into the grass area. Um, look, let me, let me take just a few minutes here. First and foremost, a huge thank you. Not just to the, the, the folks here today putting on a great event, but really all across the state, and I, and I really mean it. Uh, what we this state has had to go through in the last five or six months and do it so well and have such balance and frankly be the envy of everybody on the East Coast uh, is no small order. And it isn't just my, myself and my team that I think that have led the charge. It's really the citizens of the state that deserve a lot of the credit for actually getting us to where we are. The fact that our economy is the strongest on the East Coast. Not the strongest in New England, the strongest on the East Coast. That The fact that our COVID numbers are as low as you're going to find anywhere, right? We have become the envy, once again, of business, of families. You see people coming in and moving into New Hampshire from all across this country because we do it right. And it isn't one individual, it's really a collective here that has gotten it done. And we have a lot to be proud of. Now, we've gone through some tough times, of course. Right? We've had to create our guidance documents in the mass and all this kind of stuff, but we've done it with great balance. You know, more than any other state in this country, we put money behind our businesses and money behind our families. $550 million of CARES Act money to our businesses, to our nonprofits, to the self-employed, to the farmers, to the hospitals, right? That keeps people employed, that keeps things moving forward. And if, for those of us that are from Salem, we know you go just two miles south of here, let me tell you something. I'm not here trying to bash on Massachusetts, but it is a world of difference down there. And you ask any business, you ask any business within a thousand miles of this state where they would like to be, and they say New Hampshire is the place to be. And I'm very proud of that. We're gonna get through this COVID nightmare, and it is a nightmare. 2020 is gonna be the year to forget for a lot of reasons for a lot of families and, and a lot of folks. But we're gonna get to, we're gonna survive, right? It is not a year to thrive, we know that. Some businesses are booming, we, okay, that's fine. But for the most part, we, we're here to kind of survive. The fact we've gone from 15% unemployment to under 6% unemployment in three months, right? People are entering the job market twice as fast in New Hampshire than anywhere else in the country right now. That's a statistical fact. And we've done it because we've created this great balance. And up until the primary, as a party, we have the right to pick on the edges. We have the right to be a little bit selfish and say, well, you know, my focus is here and my issue is there and my candidate's here. Right? That's what a primary is about. But come Wednesday morning, we are together. Yes. No excuses. We are one. I don't mean to harp on the bad, but I think we have to remember what happened. We had too many elections where after the primary, we stayed divided. After the primary, we thought it was okay to nip at the edges and have our internal fights and squabblings, thinking it wouldn't really matter. It matters. What happened in 2016? Over 5% of the vote didn't go to Kelly Agot, and what was the result? They said, well, we wanted to send a message. Well, you know what the message was? We didn't get health care reform in this country. We didn't get regulatory reform at the level that the president needed it. And we didn't get the other pieces put into place into Washington. That 51st vote mattered. I gotta be honest, that's the only message I heard. This is a binary system. There are Republicans, there's Democrats, and there's everybody else. And the vast majority of everybody else is with us. Don't let them throw that vote away. Because at the end of the day, they're throwing our good candidates away. Same thing happened with Scott Brown. Scott Brown, the party didn't want to galvanize behind him. And you know what we got? Gene Shaheen. At the end of the day, this party didn't stay together. We have learned those lessons the hard way. Let's not make those mistakes again. We got great members of the House of Representatives running. We got great state Senate candidates running. We got great executive council candidates running. And by God, we need that executive council. I'm going to be selfish. We need it. People say, well, Governor, you know, you, you, some of the restrictions you need to put in place, there's some folks over here that are still really upset. That's fine. You can be upset through the primary. Who cares? Frankly, I, that doesn't bother me. But come the ninth, everyone's got to get together. You have a time to send a message, you have a time to, to vote your conscience, whatever it's gonna be. That's all about tomorrow, that's great. But come Wednesday morning, no regrets, no excuses, just results. We got 60 days. We gotta fight every day like it was our last. We have to stay galvanized, we have to talk to our friends and neighbors, and we have to remember what the, this election's about. Don't let the other side co-opt the message. The message is ours. It is what I would call the red meat. It's about the economy and jobs and safety for your family. 
security for your family, economic opportunity for your family. These are the things Republicans excel at.